Let's talk about what makes for a great thesis statement. And a thesis statement is basically just the argument of your essay. Typically, it comes at the end of your introduction. So the last sentence or two of the introduction is where you're going to find a thesis statement. If you have a longer essay, so let's say 10, 15, maybe 20 pages, it's quite possible that your thesis statement is going to come a little bit later, maybe after two or three paragraphs, uh, as it takes a little bit longer to kind of figure out what you're going to say. So there's definitely some flexibility, but in a short essay, often the thesis statement will come at the end of the first paragraph. It should be one single argument, so one argument, and try to resist the tendency to split your thesis statement into three component parts. I know a lot of teachers will say, well, you know, if you have three body paragraphs, then maybe uh, make sure that your thesis has three points. But that's kind of problematic because that leads to really three theses instead of one. So try to focus on your one argument that uh, creates the the unity of your paper that ties everything together. And if you do have some subsections, you can mention those, uh, but that should not be the main focus. Your thesis can also be more than one sentence, as I've mentioned. Uh, so try not to squeeze everything into one sentence. If it, if it doesn't work, then uh, just split it up a little bit. So let's have a look at an example here then. And one of the first things to notice is that a thesis is, is more than simply a mentioning or a listing of the topic of your essay. If you look at the first example here, this one goes, this essay will examine the consequences of legalizing euthanasia. You can see here that this is kind of announcing that you're going to talk about something but you haven't actually said what the argument is. And I've seen this very often, this kind of announcing that, you know, there, there's going to be an argument somewhere down the road, uh, but we don't have it here yet. So avoid having a thesis that's merely a placeholder. The other thing to watch out for here is uh, what's sometimes called meta-discourse. So meta-discourse. Meta-discourse is simply the kind of language we use to talk about the process of reading and writing and, and so on. And you don't necessarily need to say, you know, this essay will examine or I will argue. Uh, often you can do without those phrases. They're not necessarily forbidden, but often they're, uh, they're ones that you can avoid. If you look at the better version, this one avoids meta-discourse but it's also an argument. It's actually making a case. So it reads, in Belgium, the Liberal Euthanasia Act has eroded people's rights as more and more people are being killed without their consent. You can see that this is definitely arguing a particular position, right? It's arguing against euthanasia, and it's saying that there's a problem with consent. It can still be more specific, of course, and we can flesh this out, uh, but it's quite clear what the argument is here. So try to distinguish them between a topic, which is our first one, and an argument, which is our second one. And behind an argument is always what we call a research question. So there's always this kind of research question in the background, and in this case the question is, well, what happened in Belgium? What was the effect of the Euthanasia Act? Uh, and the answer here is, here is that it has been a negative effect. It's often really helpful if you can spell out for yourself what your research question is. It could be a question that the instructor has given you, but it can also be one that you're posing yourself or, that, or, or one that you have developed as a result of uh, reading your instructor's topic. You could sometimes use the research question as the thesis, but that's pretty experimental. I've seen that a few times. It um, doesn't always work, and so I hesitate to recommend it. But it, it is a possibility to at least put that research question somewhere in your introduction, um, and then you can answer it in your, your thesis. The research question is important because it creates tension. There should be something at stake in your thesis. Okay, so there has to be some, some kind of tension. And if you're interested in the topic of euthanasia, you can just feel the tension in this particular statement. Uh, some people are going to say, yes, the, the, there is now more euthanasia, uh, but it's good, right? And um, people's consent is, is being 
uh, honored and respected. And then other people are going to say, yes, but uh, whose consent is this? And who gets to say who, uh, who gets to die? So a lot at stake then, and that's where we want some real tension in the thesis. Another thing to think about as you, as you look at your thesis is also the scope of your thesis. If your thesis is too broad or too big, it may not be something that you can actually prove in a few pages. Um, and this idea of proving is also important. A thesis has to be provable. You can make really large claims, but if you can't provide evidence and actually prove it, uh, that presents problems. Let's look at one more example here. And this one takes us through three separate stages as we try to develop our thesis. I think that's important to point out because sometimes we're kind of lazy with the thesis. We just throw something onto the page uh, and then we don't necessarily revise it. So here we've gone through a process of kind of revising to make the thesis better. The weakest version reads, during the early modern period, mercantilist theory, that's sort of an economic theory, provided an interesting perspective on the value of imports. Watch out for words like interesting or fascinating, because often they say, well, this topic is important, but they don't say why the topic is important. So ask yourself this question, why? Right? That's sort of the driving question behind everything. Why care? Why is this significant? And we need to spell, spell out what, what is interesting about this. The better version reads, during the early modern period, many mercantilist writers argued for high import duties in the belief that a nation's strength is measured by its exports. This is fairly specific, which is great, focuses on import duties, uh, and it focuses on this idea of the nation. But still not great because it's really stating a fact. You can read the, read up on this, and it's, it's stating this fact. And probably it doesn't take too much to prove this. We can find one or two authors who uh, mercantilist authors who make this kind of claim, and then we can be done. The better yet version at the end here creates a lot more tension. So this one goes during the early modern period, mercantilist writers capitalized on nationalist sentiment people thinking about the good of the nation, in order to argue that a nation's strength is measured by its exports. The resulting imposition of taxes on imports led to greater profits for merchants, but also drove up pr prices for ordinary people. In that sense, what was good for the merchant was not necessarily good for the nation. You can see that it's taken us three sentences to kind of unpack this idea and make sure that we convey what's at stake here. But now we have a lot of tension. We have a tension between what's good for the merchants and what's good for the nation. We have nationalism versus mercantilism. Um, and then we, we sort of summarize it at the end. But if you just read the last sentence, you wouldn't get the whole thesis here, right? And so if you want to be um, kind of more compact, you could rewrite this and make sure that the last sentence was more detailed. So, you know, this is a somewhat more informal thesis uh, because we've already said quite a bit and so the last sentence is a little bit more kind of like populist writing. It's uh, less specific, but it's, it kind of sums up what came before. Think about tone then. Think about your audience. If you find that your audience is not going to be happy with this and wants everything crammed into one complex sentence, that's fine. Uh, if you're writing for a more popular audience then this kind of final summation here is great, right? It's a bit more casual than uh, what you might expect in, in the typical academic essay. So hopefully that gives you some ideas for writing effective thesis statements. Always ask those questions, you know, so what? Who cares? Why is this important? And I think if you show what's at stake, then your reader is going to be fascinated and is going to be interested in reading the rest of your essay.